please help me in welcoming Martina Zavli, who is a security system architect at Nokia. Thank you, Martina, for being here. <laughs> Martina's talk is titled, The Road to Software Architecture Revolution is Paved with DevSecOps. Welcome, Martina. Thank you very much. My name is Martina Zavli, and I'm security system architect in Nokia TAS. TAS stands for Telephony Application Server. I have been working in Nokia for the last five years, and my field of expertise is security. What are we going to talk about today? About the software architecture evolution, about some of the most popular buzzwords in IT, and how we deliver secure and hardened products to our customers by following the design for security process and the DevSecOps principles. At the beginning, we had the monolith, a huge and complex system that had all the components necessary for its functionality. Let me liken the monolith system to a donkey carrying on its back all the necessary components, making it difficult to maintain and even more challenging to scale. During the last years, a fundamental shift in architecture design has been observed towards more modularized architectural uh, de uh, designs, such as the service-oriented architecture. Distinct services responsible for a single purpose. So we can say that we safely upgraded from donkeys to racehorses. And now we are towards microservices, a collection of services that are fine-grained, loosely coupled, independently deployable, and bound their own data. So what did we do? We passed from donkeys to racehorses. What would be next? Of course, the unicorns. So I've been working in the IT sector long enough to have witnessed myself the transition from the dark ages of the monolith system towards the virtualization era with the hypervisor and the containerization era with the Docker containers. So our products are coming more cloud native. And which are the most popular IT buzzwords now? It's the Agile, it's the CI-CD, and there is a madness around DevOps. But what's the important thing about DevOps? Anyone? Why is DevOps important? I don't know. Yes, we want to lower the risk of change through tools and culture. You don't just have to bring in the tools. Bringing to Kubernetes to a broken culture will not make any good to your company. And the opposite applies as well. If you have an awesome culture, but you, you still use legacy tools, you will not see any change happen. And what is the other buzzword I haven't heard? Security. <laughs> Security is too important, but nowadays it's like we have an elephant in the room, but nobody wants to discuss about it. So we need to integrate security into our, into our development process. And I'm going to show you a picture that I seamlessly stole from Pete Cheslock and depicts the early DevOps workflows. Well, this is exactly where we are. We try to bolt security at the end. Instead of that, we should be using techniques and DevSecOps techniques in order to have security during the development process and integrate it into our DevOps pipelines. This is a typical example of a feature on top of feature. It's an electricity pole going through a balcony. And this is another example where we made the feature, we delivered it to our customer, and now we have to bolt security somehow. So let's see how we do it in Nokia TAS. This is a reference architecture. It is containerized and it uses Kubernetes as a scheduler and as an orchestrator. These are some of the tools we are using, and I guess you're familiar with most of them. 
This is a typical GitLab CI CD pipeline. I guess you all know about it. You push a commit, a new uh, pipeline is created, the runner executes the tests, and if everything goes well and it passes, so you can merge your commit to the mainline. And this is an example, a test mock environment. Nokia TAS is comprised by dozens of distinct components that are independently tested and independently deployable. So we use an environment in order to make the static code analysis tests, the feature tests, the module tests, and the unit tests. Now, how do we keep it safe? In Nokia, we are following the design for security process. It's an internal security hardening process that starts by the creation of the product and continues running until the end of the product's life cycle. But development teams wanted to keep going and security teams lowered them down in order to make all the necessary security tests. So what did we try to do? We tried to shift left security testing as left as possible in order to cut security bugs and vulnerabilities as early as possible. So we created the audit runner. Audit runner is an internal Nokia tool. It's written in Python. It is an initiative of the Athens R&D. It makes the security audit tests against many security hardening guidelines, such as the ANSI recommendations, the CIS Docker benchmark, the CIS Kubernetes benchmark, and many, many more. It has short execution time. It provides an API in order to configure your audit tests, and it exports a report in HTML that shows aggregated results, and that makes it very, very easy to read. So, audit runner can run on commit basis. And we created, we are very proud of it, and we managed to raise security awareness, and we managed to design our own DevSecOps tool. But there are security hardening requirements that cannot be tested by any tool, such as the least privilege rule or the separation of duties. So what did we do? We had to have both, as we said earlier. You don't have just to have the tools. You also have to have the culture. So we trained our engineers in order to cover such security hardening uh, audits by design while developing the code. So that's actually the important thing here. Train your teams and invest in your culture, and you will see magic happen. Here in Nokia, we don't want just to follow the trends. As global telco leaders, it is our duty to create the trends. Thank you. Martina, thank you very much. Thank you.